Lord who made heaven and earth. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, bless us with the wisdom to praise you in spirit and in truth, so that by following your holy will, we may gain eternal salvation. Amen. And now, my dear brothers and sisters, let us turn unto the altar of God and confess our sins. Having confessed our sins unto God, I will now recite the Confidior. Almighty Father, you know my deepest secrets. I confess that I have through my own fault sinned against your holy laws. In my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done or failed to do, I sincerely regret my sins and I am truly sorry for offending you. I ask, Father, that in your mercy you pardon my sins. I promise to change my way of living so that through a deeper holiness I may better serve you throughout the rest of my life. I ask the Blessed Mother Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, forgive our sins, and bring us unto life everlasting. Amen. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me by him, I absolve you of your sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, you are kind and forgiving, most loving to all who call on you. Lord, hear my prayer. Listen to my cry for help. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, your patience is greater than our faults, and your pardon is stronger than our weaknesses. Keep us in the assurance of your love, that your peace may remain in our hearts. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Today, the 16th Sunday in the Ordinary, we take the first reading from the Book of Wisdom. 
There is no God beside you who have the care of all that you need show you have not unjustly condemned for your might is the source of justice your mastery over all things make you lenient to all for you show your might when the perfection of your power is disbelieved and in those who know you you rebuke temerity but though you are master of might you judge with clemency and with much lenience you govern us for power whenever you will attends you and you taught your people by these deeds that those who are just must be kind and you gave your children good ground for hope that you would permit repentance for their sins this is the word of the lord thanks be to god today the responsorial psalm is taken from Psalm 86. And the response is, Lord, you are good and forgiving. Lord, Lord you are good and forgiving. You, O Lord, are good and forgiving, abounding in kindness to all who call on you. Hearken, O Lord, to my prayer and attend to the sound of my pleading. Lord, you are good and forgiving. All the nations you have made shall come and worship you, O Lord, and glorify your name, for you are great and you do wondrous deeds. You alone are God. Lord, you are good and forgiving. You, O Lord, are God, merciful and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in kindness and fidelity. Turn towards me and have pity on me. Give your strength to your servant. Lord, you are good and forgiving. The second reading for today is taken from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, the Spirit comes to the aid of our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but the Spirit himself intercedes with inexpressible groanings, and the one who searches hearts knows what is the intent of the Spirit, because he intercedes for the Holy Ones according to God's will. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord does not delay his promise, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Almighty and eternal God, who cleansed the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal, cleanse my heart and my lips through your gracious mercy, that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the holy gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory be to you, O Lord. Jesus proposed another parable to the crowd, saying, the kingdom of heaven may be likened to a man who sowed good seed in his field. While everyone was asleep, his enemy came and sowed weeds all through the wheat and then went off. When the crowd, crop grew and bore fruit, the weeds appeared as well. The slaves of the householder came to him and said, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where have the weeds come from? He answered, An enemy has done this. His slaves said to him, Do you want us to go and pull them up? He replied, No. If you pull up the seeds, you might uproot the wheat along with them. Let them grow together until harvest. 
Then at harvest time I will say to the harvesters, First collect the weeds and tie them in bundles for burning, but gather the wheat into my barn. He proposed another parable to them. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that a person took and sowed in a field. It is the smallest of all seeds, yet when full grown it is the largest of plants. It becomes a large bush, and the birds of the sky come and dwell in its branches. He spoke to them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast, that a woman took and mixed with three measures of wheat flour until the whole batch was leavened. All these things Jesus spoke to the crowds in parables. He spoke to them only in parables to fulfill what had been said through the prophet. I will open my mouth in parables. I will announce what was lain hidden from the foundation of the world. Then dismissing the crowds, he went into the house. His disciples approached him and said, Explain to us the parable of the weeds in the field. He said in reply, He who sows good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world. The good seed, the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one, and the enemy who sows them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the harvesters are angels. Just as weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so it will be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all those who cause others to sin, and all evildoers. They will be thrown into a fiery furnace, where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their Father. Whoever has ears ought to hear. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. May the name of Jesus Christ be praised by all of us, now and forevermore. Amen. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. For apart from me you can do nothing. Words taken from the Gospel of St. John. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. To you, my dear brothers and sisters, in Christ Jesus. Last week, we began a study of the parables of Jesus as outlined 
in the Gospel according to St. Matthew. All these parables are allegorical stories which help to form a greater understanding of the kingdom of God that Jesus taught others and preached throughout his ministry. Last week, we read of the parable of the sower who sowed seed. Today, we hear three other parables that are associated with the spiritual growth of a disciple of our Lord and Savior that is found in these parables that sets before Christians a blueprint and a template by which this growth takes place. The parable of the wheat and tares is outlined in Matthew chapter 13, verse 24 through 30, speaks of the next stage of the development of the good seed that was sown, namely the gen germination and the growth of the young plant. I learned that there is a weed found in the Middle East that is poisonous and grows along with wheat. It is known as the bearded darnel, which also has been called fake wheat. In the beginning stages of the germination of wheat, this weed is undistinguishable from the wheat. As they both grow together, this weed, this tear, begins to take on a slightly difference of different appearance. The problem with removing this weed too soon is that its roots become so intertwined with the roots of the wheat that to remove it prematurely would result in destroying the good wheat. It is only at the harvest that the two can properly be separated. The process of removing the darnel from the wheat in the days of Jesus was very laborious and could only be done by hand. To have someone deliberately sow darnel or weeds among the wheat was a crime which was punishable in Roman law. I believe that Jesus wanted to point out to all that even when the good seed of the Word of God takes root within oneself and begins to grow, it grows many times along with the tares and weeds of life. If one does not properly cultivate the good plant with the wisdom in the teachings of the Lord, the weeds will eventually choke and destroy that good seed that was planted. Jesus goes on in the same chapter, Matthew 13, verses 37 through 39, where we read, And he, Jesus, answered, The one who sowed the good seed is the Son of Man, the field is the world and the good seed stands for the people of the kingdom the weeds are the people of the evil one and the enemy who sows them is the devil in distinguishing between the wheat and the tares we find the word discernment discernment is defined as the act of perceiving, distinguishing, or recognizing something or someone different. In the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians, he speaks of a different spiritual gift that is given unto the church. And among these different gifts, we read in chapter 12, verse 10, 
that discernment is a spiritual gift from God which helps us to recognize different spirits. It could be said that anyone or anything which looks to destroy the good seed of the Word of God sowed within the heart of the individual is an enemy to that Word. And so as Jesus ended many of his parables, he uses these words of instruction. Let those who have ears hear. In today's Gospel, we read of two other parables, the parable of the mustard seed and the parable of the yeast that was added to flour. I believe that each of these stories has to do with the positive growth of a Christian and involves faith. Faith is a very strong word and is mentioned in the Gospel of Jesus many times as well as in the readings, in the writings of Paul. We find that faith is defined as having complete trust or confidence in someone or something. And St. Paul defines faith in the letter to the Hebrews, chapter 11, verse 1, as the assurance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. In our Christian beliefs, we look to the Lord Jesus and all those who have asked him sincerely to come into their lives. It is essential that in him we place our complete trust and confidence in the words that he spoke in the good news. Although we cannot see faith in a physical way, it is an inner gift of man given through the grace of God and offered to all those who would seek spiritual enlightenment and the sanctification of their very souls. Jesus says that if you have the faith the size of a mustard seed, you can do all things the parable of the yeast added to the flour is a process of transformation that takes place within the individual who chooses freely to take up their own cross, denying themselves and following the Lord. Just as a transformation takes place with the life-giving agent of yeast added to the flour, which causes the flower to grow and expand, so it is, my brothers and sisters, in the life of a Christian who grows in stature and in the wisdom of the Lord by possessing the life-giving agent of God's Word through His Spirit, which shapes and defines our own characters. These three parables, as well as others, are lessons that one should honestly seek to understand in their own lives and apply it in their daily living, associated with the reading of the Word of God and in the power of prayer, reflection, and contemplation. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, may we all have ears to hear that spiritual message found in the parables of Jesus. May we come to know the wisdom of Jesus as he taught in the Gospel of John. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the name of Jesus Christ be praised by all of us, now and forevermore. Amen.
I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again. In fulfillment of the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. On this day as we gather to give God worship, our praise and our thanksgiving, let us offer intercessions for others. Let us offer prayers for the sick, the suffering, and the dying, for the homeless, for the hungry, for the unemployed, for all those who are suffering from the COVID-19 pandemic, and their families who are struggling at the same time, we pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray this day for all abused, neglected children in our world, for all victims of violence, both here and abroad. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray this day for all those who serve in our armed forces, that God would be gracious and protect them from harm and safely return them to their families. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our Polish National Catholic Church and pray for our prime bishop, for bishops assembled with him, and for all the parishes that God's grace might bring to us wisdom and understanding. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray this day for holy name of Jesus, Polish National Catholic Church, that through the wisdom that God imparts unto all who gather in this holy place, his spirit, that we might grow in truly understanding what it means to be disciples unto the Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And so, therefore, we pray to you, Lord, and we are reminded, as St. Paul taught, but for that reason, I mercifully treated unto others, so that in me, as the foremost, Christ might be displayed in all his patience as an example for those who would come to believe in him for everlasting life.
sisters, that our gifts of love and sacrifice may truly be accepted this day by God, our Heavenly Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice from your hands, for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and for the benefit of his holy church. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, look upon this service of ours, so that our gifts may be acceptable and worthy of gaining your mercy. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your poor hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, all-powerful and ever-living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through his cross and resurrection, he freed us from sin and death and called us to the glory that has made us a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, and a people set apart. Everywhere we proclaim your mighty works, for you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so therefore, on this day, we join with the voices of the angels and archangels, with all the saints and the entire church, and we lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating unceasingly, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he, who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. My dear brothers and sisters, today we will be using the Eucharistic prayer number two, which is the canon of Saint Hippolytus, an early church father. We give thanks to you, God our Father, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, whom in these last days you have sent us as Savior, Redeemer, and Messenger of your will. He is your Word, inseparable from you. Through him you have made all things, and in him you were well pleased. You sent him from heaven to a virgin's womb. There he dwelt and was made flesh. And he was revealed as your Son, born through the Holy Spirit and of the Virgin. When he suffered, he fulfilled your will and gained for you a holy people. He stretched out his hands to free from suffering those who believed in you. When he was betrayed to his freely chosen suffering, thereby to destroy death, to break the chains of darkness, to crush hell beneath his feet, to give light to the just, to make a covenant, and to manifest his resurrection. He took bread. He gave you thanks and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you.
In like manner, he took the cup and said, This is my blood, which is poured out for you. Whenever you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Calling then his death and resurrection to mind, we offer you the bread and the cup. We thank you for allowing us to come before you and to serve you. We ask you to send your Holy Spirit upon the offering of your Holy Church to gather all in unity. Grant to all who partake of these holy mysteries the fullness of the Holy Spirit for the strengthening of their faith in the truth. So may we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him may glory and honor be yours, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church. Forever and ever, let us pray. Let us pray with confidence to the Father in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin, and protect us from all anxiety, as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. The cup of blessing which we bless, is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? Because there is one bread, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. May the union and divinity and humanity in Jesus Christ bring a sanctification and eternal life. Amen. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Do not look at our sins, but on the faith of your church and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom where you live forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. And now, let us greet one another in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Peace be unto all of you. And now, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. And now, we will pray the communion prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free me from all my sins and from every evil. Keep me faithful to your teaching and never let me be parted from you. I will take the bread of heaven and I will call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. May the body of Christ Bring me to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. 
May the blood of Christ bring me to everlasting life. Amen. Consider the patience of our Lord as salvation. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, do not withhold your patience from us, for we have partaken at your holy table. May your presence strengthen us as we await your kingdom. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. May the peace and the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon all of you. And may the grace of God's love be ever within your hearts. Thanks be to God. Let us go forth and walk in the light of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My dear brothers and sisters, again I welcome you for our worship as we offer the Holy Mass of the Eucharist. It is my prayer that all of us might be blessed by the Spirit of God, that we all might remain healthy and safe until we have a chance to come together again. And now let us offer a final prayer for the living as well as for the deceased. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And for the repose of the souls of all our faithful departed. 
Eternal rest grant unto their souls, O Lord. May perpetual light shine upon them. May they all rest in peace. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.